everybody, JC here from Toy News International. And today I just wanted to shoot a video here. I wanted to share my thoughts, my kind of, these are kind of raw thoughts. So this isn't like just a straight review, but I wanted to share my raw thoughts on the Justice League movie, which I saw last night. Now this will contain some spoilers, so I'll give you, I'll tell you what I thought overall about the movie, but then I'm going to start going into spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie already, at that point, you'll probably want to turn the video off and come back after you've actually seen the movie because I don't want to ruin it for you. And I will also have a non-spoiler written review, which will probably go in a little more in depth of my thoughts. So you, if again, if you haven't seen the movie, but just want to know what I thought initially about it, then you probably want to head over and read that before, you know, going to the theater, assuming you haven't seen it already. I'm sure many of you went last night, kind of like I did and, and, and saw the movie. I also, I got a, a free Funko Pop uh, flash figure here. These, they're actually handing these out at the movie theater at Regal Movie Theaters. I think this was a promotion they were doing I'd, I'd read about it but um, I thought they were mailing you these I didn't know they were going to give you these at the actual theater I assume they only had limited supplies so probably if you went to the first or maybe first two showings last night you probably only got this and I don't even know if these were given out at all regal theaters um, I, I think the figure itself has been released before but you get the little exclusive real 3d regal cinema exclusive sticker on there so i guess that's probably going to supposed to add value to it or something i don't know but anyway i will say that my initial thoughts on this movie and this is the non-spoiler part of the video is i thought overall it was a pretty enjoyable movie a, a good movie but it wasn't a great movie and because of that, because I felt like a movie like Justice League that has all these iconic superheroes on the screen together for the first time, it really should have been a great movie. I did end up walking out of the theater feeling a little bit disappointed. Now, as I go through this video, it might kind of sound more like, because I'm probably going to focus more on the things I didn't like than what I did like about the movie, that, you know, I hated it. And again, that's not the case. I, I did think it was overall an enjoyable movie and a step in the right direction for these DC movies. It's just that, again, I didn't feel it was a great movie. And with a movie like this, with you know all the buildup and everything, I, I felt like it should have been a great movie. And unfortunately, I don't feel it was a great movie. Okay, so the main reason why I didn't feel this was a great movie is primarily because I did not think they did enough backstory building with these characters and I hate to take like Marvel and throw it into the face of DC fans because I know there's such a rivalry and I really do like both DC and Marvel so I don't really get into that whole you know versus thing but I will say that I think Marvel did it much better leading up to the first Avengers movie by doing individual movies for each of their main characters and even like characters like Black Widow and Hawkeye had a little bit of backstory building in some of those other films leading up to Avengers. And more specifically, the villain, the main villain of Avengers had some build up in those other movies. So you just didn't get hit with basically, you know, fresh out of the box. Because I mean, before the Avengers movies, Loki probably wasn't a villain that just everybody who, you know, non-Marvel reading, you know, Marvel comic reading fans was that familiar with. So, you know, Marvel took the time to actually kind of establish these characters leading up to Avengers so that you were invested in each of the characters, including the villain, by the time we got to the big payoff. And that's what I feel like was really missing with, with this Justice League movie. Yes, we had some build up with the main characters, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. And I think... If you, if you want to take DC and look at the one character where I think they really handled them correctly from day one, it's Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, you know, we first were introduced to in Dawn of Justice, and she was definitely one of the shining points of Dawn of Justice. Um, and then they gave her her own movie where, you know, really established who she was and what motivated her and got you invested in the character. And then they brought her into this movie as one of the leading characters. And that, to me, is what they really should have done with each of their characters, not just Batman, Superman, and, and Wonder Woman. 
definitely with Flash, definitely with Cyborg, and definitely with Aquaman, and more importantly, with Steppenwolf. I mean, obviously, I'm not saying give Steppenwolf his own movie, but we should have seen Steppenwolf and more build up to Steppenwolf in the previous movies than what we did, and so that we were more invested in this character leading up to this. And that's what I think was primarily missing from the Justice League movie here, which is why I felt it was not a great movie. Now, there are some other things I didn't like, like I thought the CGI was a bit overused in this movie. I thought there were a lot of scenes that to me just kind of came off looking fake or cartoony. And maybe that was a deliberate style choice, I don't know. But I, I thought that that took a little bit away from it, um, you know, and it's not, you know, CGI has come a long way. And, you know, so you can do it CGI a lot and, and still have a decent movie. And I think Thor is kind of a good example of that. But here, I just think it did not work as well. Also, I, I some of the special effects, like with the fighting scenes, I just don't like as much, like the slow motion, the overuse of the slow motion. And that was one of my biggest complaints with like Wonder Woman is, is that overuse of the slow motion and stuff. I just think it's a little bit old. So, you know, it's kind of like I watched like the Flash TV series and, and the CW DC TV series and I almost feel like the effects in those are better than what we see on the big screen with, with their characters and so I don't know that's 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 just a complaint I have that I felt took a little bit away and you might disagree and I mean there were some cool things I mean we saw some cool vehicles like the crawler which Mattel is supposed to be doing a toy of I'm not sure when that's going to be released and then the flying fox which was much smaller than what I thought it was going to be I when I saw this thing the toy when I was reviewing the toy and everything I, I, I was thinking more of this was going to be like a helicarrier type deal like you know from Avengers but but it's actually best way to describe it is it's basically a, a, a futuristic looking cargo plane. Um, it's big enough to store the Batmobile in, but it's not like this huge helicarrier type deal. And so that, that was kind of interesting. And then of course the Batmobile, which was pretty cool in this one. Okay, so that's the end of the non-spoiler portion of the vi video. Again, if you haven't seen the movie, you should definitely turn it off, go over to TNI and read my non-spoiler review for more on my insight on it. But, and then come back, once you have seen the movie, come back and, and listen to the rest of my thoughts and, and share your own thoughts. But, but definitely, you know, don't keep watching if you haven't seen the movie yet. So let me backtrack a little bit again. So going back to not really establishing the care, a lot of the characters in this movie and the biggest one being the villain. I've heard a lot of complaints about this being a terrible villain. When I heard that, I thought, oh, well, they just, especially since he's mostly CGI, I was like, oh, well, this, he's brought, you know, he's going to be, I'm going to cringe when I see him on the screen. And that's not really the case. It's not a villain that's hard to watch. In fact, you know, I thought his voice, you know, I thought the voice they were using for him and stuff was cool. And, you know, as a CGI character, I actually didn't think they did a, a, too bad of a job with him. As far as, you know, the, one of the CGI aspects that I didn't have a problem with was the actual Steppenwolf character but I did think what Steppenwolf suffered from was that we weren't invested in him they didn't do a very good job of flushing him out and therefore you know he was there to take on the bad guys and that's pretty much it and so you know you know again not trying to throw Avengers and, and Marvel and, and DC fans faces but you know when we got to Loki and the Avengers movie we were kind of invested in him. We we pretty much knew who he was and and things like that. Yes, we do get a backstory for step a, a bit of a backstory, which to me came off more like something that you would see in Lord of the Rings than a DC comic book. If I wasn't familiar with Steppenwolf in the DC comics, I would probably it would be totally probably lost on me his connection to Darkseid. Yes, he says the name Darkseid once, and you know, you've got the parademons, but again, the parademons, I wouldn't know, if I wasn't familiar with the comics, I wouldn't know that the parademons were, were associated with Darkseid. And this movie really does nothing to make that connection. Basically, the story that they lay down for Steppenwolf is he's this powerful dude who came to Earth thousands of years ago and was trying to destroy it with these mother boxes and the tribes of earth and this is where you kind of get that lord of the rings vibe with the atlanteans the amazons and the humans along with some outsiders and we do get kind of a cool green lantern easter egg in this scene and maybe a hint of things to come with green lantern and such 
But basically all these, you know, come together and defeat Steppenwolf and then they take the mother boxes and they split them up between the three tribes who take them and hide them so that Steppenwolf can never use them to destroy the Earth. And of course, now that Superman is dead, Steppenwolf sees an opportunity to come back to Earth and try and do that. And that's what he sets out to do. And that's the basic plot of the movie. But again, you really wouldn't know his connection, really wouldn't get his connection with Darkseid and it's even unclear if they're really going planning on going forward with building up to a dark side cli climax with this or not because at the end and I'll go in a little more detail in a minute about this but with the after credit scenes it seems like they're actually going in a completely different direction than dark side it's like this is it for dark side um i really feel like maybe dark side should have been the villain for this movie not steppenwolf steppenwolf maybe could have been one of his generals but you know that he was the main villain i kind of feel like was a mistake i mean again maybe they will go back to dark side at some point assuming these last that long but from just this movie i really did not get an impression that that dark side was was coming um anymore so i don't know but anyway so so we get that backstory and and then you know like i said steppenwolf sets out to reclaim the the three mother boxes the one from the amazons which is where he ends up first and so you get a battle with them and of course, they're no match for Steppenwolf. And then he goes to Atlantis to get that one. And that's where Mira appears. And she has a brief scene. And it's kind of like coincidentally, Aquaman happens to swim back to Atlantis at this time and ends up, you know, fighting Steppenwolf. And then has a brief interaction with Mira where I guess they're trying to set up for an Aquaman movie. But again, I thought this kind of failed, really didn't get me invested in the Aquaman character. You know, the scene just seemed like was kind of rushed and thrown together. And then he goes on to basically join the Justice League. And then, of course, he come, he goes after the one with uh, th that the humans have, which specifically is in the hands of, of Cyborg and his father at Star Labs. Now, I will say I did like I did like how they brought Superman back to life. I thought it was kind of a logical explanation. It wasn't like Superman just magically came back to life and, and such. They actually used the mother box to um, basically shock him back to life, essentially, this big, powerful mother box. And so I, I kind of like that. And then, you know, they wake him up essentially using the, the mother box and the Kryptonian technology from the ship. And, and then Superman comes back to life. And at first he's kind of confused and he ends up taking on the Justice League members. And then he flies off with Lois and regains his full memory and everything and eventually joins the rest of the Justice League to save the day. So for the most part, I, kind of, I, I like that. Now, one thing I will say about Superman is... I felt like when Superman comes towards the end with the final battle and everything, the impression I kind of felt was left feeling was Superman could have just come and taken out Steppenwolf all on his own. He really didn't need the other members of the Justice League. Um, the member, you know, the other members when they were taking on Steppenwolf, you know, they barely could hold him off at all, and you know they needed help. But when once Superman arrived, it was like, okay, I'm here. I'm beating the crap out of you. Oh wait, civilians, let me go save them. Okay, I'm beating now. Steppenwolf is beating the crap out of the heroes again until Superman returns after saving all the civilians and. And then basically beats the shit out of Steppenwolf and helps Cyborg save the day by splitting the, the mother boxes apart. And so I felt like, you know, again, going back to Avengers, you didn't feel, you never felt like, oh, well, the Hulk just could have taken out this whole armada. It was like truly a group effort that took all of them working together to, to save the day. And it wasn't just, you know, oh, Superman's here. Thank God we, we can now win. And so I, I didn't really like that angle of the Superman aspect of this movie. But again, I did like at least how they explained bringing him back to life in this one. And now I will, I, I do wonder how they're going to explain how Clark Kent is magically back to life at the same time that Superman's back to life. They really didn't go into detail about that, but it'll be interesting to see how they try and explain that. So 
Things, uh, I've talked a lot about things I didn't like about the movie. And again, you're probably thinking, oh my God, this is a God awful movie. I'm not going to go see this. But again, in truth, I thought that it was a decent movie and there were definitely positive things about the movie. It was definitely had a little bit lighter tone than the previous movies, which had been slammed for being too dark. So they definitely took steps to try and lighten it a bit. The Flash was basically the comic relief of this movie. And for the most part, I think he did a pretty good job. There were times maybe where he got a little irritating, but I kind of felt the same way about Spider-Man and Homecoming. I thought, you know, the Tom Holland character, while for the most part I like, there were some times with just the inexperienced aspects and I guess being a kid and stuff, it just got a little bit of a grading. Um, and yeah, I guess there's some realism to that. And this version of Flash is definitely portrayed more as a younger and experienced superhero type aspect so very similar between the flash to me very similar between the flash character in this movie and say the tom holland spider-man um, very similar between those two characters and play very similar roles in my opinion between these two movies and definitely were scenes that you know made me chuckle now i don't think they overdid the humor in this one you know one of my big complaints about more recent marvel movies especially like thor which overall i did enjoy but i felt like they really overdid the comedy aspects of Thor you know making Thor kind of a, a comedic type character I just don't think really fits the character well um, so I don't think they overdid the comedy in this one I, I hope as they go forward they don't you know follow Marvel's pattern in that regard I hope they try and balance it but definitely they made it a little more lighter in this movie than in previous movies and you can definitely tell that like the whole like the opening scene of this movie is it's kind of a flashback scene and honestly doesn't really do much else, but basically kind of puts Superman in this kind of uh, more uh, inspirational light than the darker tones that we've seen with the character in the past. And basically it shows these kids uh, doing a podcast interviewing Superman and they're asking him questions and stuff. And again, I think the whole point of that scene was to say, hey, look, here's Superman and he's a beacon of hope. He's not, he's not a depressing, you know, alien who who doesn't know whether he should be a god or you know whatever like we saw with man of steel and and even in dawn of justice so i i think that was definitely the point of that opening scene and again the overall tone i think was much lighter in this movie than the previous movies which was you know for the most part i i, I think a good thing as I mentioned before, Wonder Woman, I think they've handled great throughout these movies and continue to do so. She was definitely one of the shining points of this movie. She kind of helped bring the team together and was probably even more of a leader aspect of the team than Batman. And so I thought, you know, again, definitely they did a very good job. Gal did a great job portraying the character and she definitely continues to be one of the shining uh, aspects of the whole DC cinematic universe. Batman, Ben Affleck, I thought did a pretty decent job overall. I liked his interactions with the other characters, especially like Aquaman. I was really kind of worried about Aquaman from the trailers and stuff. But I think they actually, Aquaman, again, didn't really get you that invested in the character. But I didn't come away hating Aquaman either. I thought, you know, it was actually a pretty uh, cool character and, and looking forward to seeing more about him. I just, again, going back saying, you know, if we'd gotten an Aquaman solo film first, I think that would have been better. If we'd gotten a Flash solo film first, I think that would have been better. If we'd gotten a Cyborg solo film first, I think that would have been better, you know, going into this Justice League movie. But none of the characters I came out hating. So that that's definitely a positive thing. I think, you know, for the most part, I think they've done a pretty good job. Cyborg, I think, you know, probably they fleshed out the best in this movie. And, you know, with the whole thing with his dad, aspect of his dad and having to merge with this alien technology. Now, part of that's because he plays a key role because of his communication and integration with the mother boxes and everything. But, you know, definitely I thought they did a pretty good job with Cyborg. And... Well, again, Aquaman, you know, you weren't really emotionally connected. I, I, I thought they did a decent job with him. And Flash, again, comedic relief. And if you can accept him as the kind of inexperienced young hero playing that kind of Tom Holland Spider-Man role for this movie, then I think you'll like the Flash as well.
Now there were some things confusing, like at the end where uh, they go into the burnt out mansion, which we still don't really know what happened there. And they start talking about setting up a table and stuff. It's like, are they gonna make, is, is this gonna be the new Justice League headquarters? Is that where they're going with it? Are they gonna turn Wayne Manor into the Justice League headquarters? I don't know, that, that was kind of confusing to me. Now, probably the thing that was the coolest to me was the two after credit scenes. And there are two after credit scenes. The first one is more of a, just a lighthearted kind of a tribute to comic book fans. And basically after everything, after the day's been saved and everything, Superman and Flash decide they're gonna race each other. And we've seen this many times in the comics and such. And so they basically get together and they race to the West Coast. But the second scene, the second after credit scene is the one that's, I guess, leading into what's to come and definitely a cool scene. We get our first look at Deathstroke the Terminator, which is going to be in the upcoming Batman solo film. And basically this scene seems to be laying the groundwork for a Legion of Doom. So as I mentioned before, whereas in the previous movies, it looked like the buildup was supposed to be to dark side. Now it seems like we're shifting gears and now going to be building a Legion of Doom. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. In fact, a Legion of Doom might be more interesting than a dark side story anyway, especially with like special effects and everything. But it just seems like kind of a shift of, of where they were going to what they're doing now. And maybe they're going to do both. I don't know. You know, a lot probably will depend on how long these movies last, which is unclear at this point. But but definitely, I like that after credit scene. I thought Deathstroke looked great, better than even how he appears in like the Arrow TV series, which, which I think is pretty cool. But I think this version is best. Really, I was like, when I saw it, I was like, oh, please give me an action figure of this version of Deathstroke. Uh, but anyway, in the scene, he basically, he's brought on, Lex Luthor has escaped jail. And then we see Deathstroke brought on to Lex Luthor's yacht, expense, big expensive yacht, which is where he's hiding out now. And basically he brings Deathstroke on board to, um, and makes indications that he's putting together his own league. The heroes are putting together their league. So let's put our own league together, which again, I'm assuming is a reference to the Legion of Doom. And I guess will end up sending Deathstroke after Batman in the upcoming Batman solo film. So that's where I, I guess they're going with that. But definitely that was one of the definite highlights of this movie. And even if you don't like this movie, I think after seeing that scene, you will be excited for what's to come in the DC universe. And, and so, you know, like I said, definitely one of the cool highlights of the movie. So that's it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, these videos, these review videos are only good if you share your own thoughts after you've seen the movie. Did you like it? Why? Did you agree with me? You know, what did you agree with me about? And what did you not agree with me about? Definitely want to hear your thoughts below. So please chime in. Also, if you're so inclined, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate it. You can also follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I have a lot of uh, conversations about this kind of stuff on my Facebook page. So definitely hit me up there if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, I will catch you later.